My name is Matthew Buck. The disorder that I've chosen to present on is Jackson Weiss syndrome, which is a disorder that affects the feet and skulls of people from birth throughout the rest of their lives. Some of the signs and symptoms of Jackson Weiss syndrome are foot abnormalities, such as your first toes being shorter, wider, or bending away from the rest of your toes, or syndactyly which is the fusion of digits together, such as fingers or toes, though in the case of Jackson Weiss syndrome, only toes are affected. Another symptom is craniosynostosis, which is the premature fusion of bone in the skull, which can lead to deformations in the skull, such as an enlarged forehead or widely spaced eyes. Midface hypoplasia is also a possibility, and is the flattening of the forehead as opposed to its normal curvature. Finally, some people are also affected by hearing impairments, which are caused by the deformations in their skull. The images below are examples of syndactyly. On the left is a photo of the feet of an infant who is affected by Jackson Weiss syndrome. As you can see, the big toes are facing outward from the rest of the foot and the rest of the toes are fused together. The toes on the right foot are affected by syndactyly, though not by Jackson Weiss syndrome. Who is most affected? Jackson Weiss syndrome appears equally throughout the population. We're unsure what the incidence rate is exactly. It seems that each different race is equally affected by it, as well as equal effect between genders. We do know that Jackson Weiss syndrome is congenital, meaning that the effects begin at birth and the effects will last the person throughout their lifetime. And the image picture below is a baby who was affected by Jackson Weiss syndrome. You can see the enlarged forehead. And in the image to the right is a 3D representation of the skull of one who is affected by Jackson Weiss syndrome. What causes Jackson Weiss syndrome? This disorder is caused by a mutation in the gene fibroblast growth factor receptor 2. FGFR2 is in charge of cell division, cell growth, formation of blood vessels, and wound healing, among other processes. Because the gene is partially inside of the cell and partially outside, it transmits information between cells. The problem occurs when the mutation causes the cell to transmit information telling other cells to become bone before they're ready to become bone. This is the factor within the syndrome that causes the skull to become malformed. The mutation can be inherited from a parent or can occur naturally, depending on the circumstances. How is it inherited? Jackson Weiss syndrome is autosomal dominant, which means that only one of the parents needs to have one mutated gene for their child to have a possibility of having the disorder. If there is only one mutated gene, there is a 50% chance that the child born between them will have this disorder. It's caused by a mutation of the FGFR2 gene and affects chromosome number 10. The specific location is 10q26.13 on the longer arm of chromosome number 10 at position 26.13. The top picture on the right is a Punnett square showing the children of two parents, one who has one gene with the mutation for Jackson Weiss syndrome and the other who is completely recessive. Between these two parents, it is shown that 50% of the children, two of the four, would be born with Jackson Weiss syndrome due to it being autosomal dominant. The second image pictured is an example of the place on the chromosome which the mutation can be found at. Currently there is no cure for Jackson Weiss syndrome and there is very little treatment available. Sometimes surgery can be performed to lessen the effects of it by changing the sculpt of the bone that is affected by the disorder. This is my Works Cited page showing the resources that I got my information from. 
And this concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, drop them down below.